Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Wednesday, coming at you with 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition 8-box picker team number 9 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Big thank you to this group right here for making it happen. I appreciate you. Thank you. Chad, you ended up with the official last spot mojo with the Rangers. If you have a Jumbo Pack 8 next to your name, that means you won that spot in the filler we did just before we started this video. Did I upload that pack? I, uh, I did. Did I add that pack to the promo list? Because you are part of the promo. I did. And everyone on that list is part of the promo as well. So you might be asking yourself, Nicole might be asking herself, so Joe, does that mean I get an entry for being in the Jumbo Break and another entry for getting the Marlins? The answer is yes. These are kind of heavy. I could probably do like curls with these, work on the biceps a little bit, work on the guns. I could maybe, uh, maybe kind of lift these behind my head, work on my, uh, work on my triceps. Work on that too. I could, I could maybe just work on the core, kind of bring those around a little bit. You know, I could, I could hold this above my head while I'm doing, doing crunches. Work on those abs. All right. Good luck, everybody. She is a lucky girl, Joe P. There she is. And we did get the uh, we did get the uh, promo done because that best university break is full. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna do the Bowman University break after this. And then uh, we'll give away the break credit. No, I'm not doing, I don't do any exercises. You are, you are correct. That is a lie. Right. Those are the only curls I'm doing. Curling, uh, cur <laughs> curling an adult beverage into my mouth. That's right. That's right, Jason. Yeah, probably, probably, probably have as much muscle mass as an eight-year-old boy. Not sure how Jason is familiar with the body mass type of an eight-year-old boy. That's interesting. He might be on some lists. <laughs> All right, box number one, three autos a box on average. So for example, this kind of paper will ship, that won't ship, All right? So rookie card paper will ship, Bowman first paper will ship, but like prospect paper and vet paper won't ship. So like these guys aren't gonna ship, or that will ship because that's Bowman first on This guy won't ship though. So just keep that in mind. And three autos a box. Otherwise, all chrome ship, obviously. All numbered paper will ship, obviously. And Jorge Burgos will ship. That's 40 out of 250. Purple chrome going to Jeremy and the Guardians. And Shea Whitcomb will ship because it's an autograph 33 out of 50 that's 
for Oren and the Houston Astros. And I'll, of course, I'll do an autograph recap at the end of the break. If you're re-watching this video, you can fast forward to, oh, that's Roger Arias, not Spencer Jones. You can, there's Spencer Jones. If you're watching live, you're stuck with me in this break. I guess if you're not in this break, you can just you could leave, I suppose. Jason Jaspi is still live on Instagram. And we've got we've got a Nate Savino. Joe Pizzle, what team is this guy on? Joe Pizzle knows his pro let's see how well Joe Pizzle knows his prospects. Mm, don't look it up, Joe P. Oh, he's got he's gonna know this. <laughs> One sec as I Google it. That's that doesn't count. You should know this though. Arizona Diamondbacks. He's from uh, from Sterling uh, Potomac Falls High School from Sterling, Virginia, and uh, drafted by the Diamondbacks in the third round. That's going to go to Matthew Shira. Chad Daw is saying, uh, which team has the worst batting average in baseball? Well, knowing how negative you are about your team, I would say it's the Seattle Mariners. There's Cam Collier. That Spencer Jones, by the way, went to Mark Nofke, by the way. And then Cam Collier goes to Mark Bissett and the Reds. Those are some of the some of the more uh, upper tier, along with Edward Julian, Drew Jones, Justin Crawford. Those are some of the upper tier rookies that were sleeving and top loading from the get-go. They are the worst unwatchable. Well, how are they doing now? There was a little rain delay. They should be able to tee off against... J.P. Sears. Maybe they're not teeing off on J.P. Sears. He has four strikeouts already through three. And our third auto is Wilmer Abreu. Although, whenever we get these like All America um, Under Armour player autographs, sometimes we get an extra auto. That's usually like a bonus auto. So this goes to Oren and the Astros. Let's see if we can find a bonus auto out of here. A fourth. Did they almost get no hit yesterday by the? By the A's? Well, I'd be shocked. With the team they have, Chad, I'll be shocked if they have the worst average in baseball by the All-Star break. It's a lot of season to go. And there's Justin Crawford. Carl's kid, Carl Crawford's kid. That's magenta paper to 299. That'll be for the Phillies. Neil with that one. There's Roderick Arias, speckled to 299 for the Yankees. That'll be for Mark. There's Edward Julian. And there's Drew Jones. Uh, the team they have besides Julio, who, man, I, I don't know how, Chad, you just go from here to here to here. 
I, I, I'm con I have concerns for your blood pressure and your heart. You should have seen him during the playoffs. Marriage in the playoffs when they got in. What an amazing team. This team's fantastic. How far could they possibly go? And then it was just depths of despair when they were out of the playoffs. It was this is the worst day ever. This is... There's Fraley Encarnacion. That's our fourth autograph of the box. Yeah, it's the roller coaster ride of being a Seattle sports fan, I guess. I mean, I feel like the other day Chad was making Stanley Cup parade plans with the Kraken. Next loss that they have, I think it's going to be which 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 bridge? It's going to be looking at bridges to jump off of. Yeah, forget about the Mariners, Chad. Just think about your Kraken. Yeah, except Chad's like Chad's like the opposite of you, Rex. Chad's like just way too negative. Just impossibly negative. You are like impossibly positive. <laughs> I mean we need both of you guys to come come a little bit closer to the middle here. It's a long season. Jared, I'm looking at the box score right now. Jared Kalanick's hitting 313. Yeah, that's your number three hitter, Jared Kalanick. When I mean, when a guy that hit 160, well, that's last year. This year, Jared Kalanick's hitting 313. He's one for two today. Kellenic's the only player doing anything. What were you? Th remind us of your thoughts about Jared Kellenic last year, Chad. You want to apologize to Jared? When's Jared Kalanick going to go to the minors? Is he a bust? When will the Mariners trade him? He's not going to do anything in the league. How many years does Jared Kalanick last in the league? Less than three? Less than two? Mm, I've always been high? No, stop. I, I don't think. Jason, where's Jason Jaspi? I feel like Jason Jaspi. Am I wrong here? Was he. I feel like there were some some uh, some harsh words about Jared Kalanick for many moons. There's Tommy Specht. No, you well, you also said that about Kyle Lewis. I'm pretty sure you said that about Jared Kalanick too. There's 24 out of, I think you do hate Kyle Lewis more, but not as much as Kyle Seeger. Kyle Lewis you didn't like. Maybe it's a Kyle thing, but yeah, I've heard harsh words about Kalanick too. Will he ever figure it out? I don't think he I don't think he's had anything about I don't think he's gonna he doesn't have what it takes to be a major leaguer.
You didn't say that? I'm pretty sure you did. Where, where's Jimmy or Danny? There's Yiner Fernandez, 100 out of 399. Lava for my Dodgers. That'll be for Mark. Mark was set with that. Why did we trade for Kalanick? What a what a poor move. I think you did say about Kalanick. I mean, Chad, maybe you're just so blind blinded with r rage against your uh, against your Mariners. I think you forget sometimes what you say about these players. You're just so blinded with with rage, just the the red mist over your eyes. And there's Junior Tillian. That's for the Metropolitans. That's going to be four for Neil Patel. There you go, Neil. Scott has a, from a Mets point of view, Scott saying, not happy about the trade then or now. I mean, who knew that he was going to, he's going to do his ACL during the World Baseball class. You weren't happy with the trade then? I suppose not. I feel like, I feel like he's put up the numbers last year. Averson Arteaga at a two ninety nine uh, for the Giants for David Harrell and his Giants. We got a paper and chrome Cam Collier for Mark and the Reds. Got for the A's, Speckle Autograph, Colin Palouse, 25, uh, 25, 255 out of 299. Yeah, I'm looking at the Mariners lineup. Yeah, it's not good. But, I mean, I'd be surprised if they had the lowest average in baseball by, by midseason. You think Julio's going to hit 235 all year? I mean, AJ Pollock's not going to hit 125 all year. I assure you that. Tom Murphy's hitting 176. He's a lifetime 233. That's going to go up. Right? There's some, there, there's some, yeah, Julio's not going to hit 235 all year. Pollock's not going to hit 125 all year. Oh, 
Why is Tom Murphy starting anyway? Don't the Mariners know that I have Cal Raleigh on my fantasy team? I need the big dumper to hit some more home runs like he has been doing. A two home run game the other night. It's pretty nice. Yeah, but Cal Raleigh's not hitting bad. You're not expecting batting titles from Cal Raleigh. You know, you want to hit those, hit those jacks. Call a good game and hit those jacks. Next box. And we've got a pink Riley Green out of 175. Pink paper. Pink Panther. Doo -doo -doo. Rick T with the Tigers. All right, well, Chad, fine. You're right. Season's over for the Mariners. Just, uh, we'll be happy to, uh, why don't you just go ahead and trade Julio Rodriguez to the Dodgers. Get some guys, we, there's a lot of guys in the Dodgers farm system that can, that can hit above the Mendoza line. We'll send you some of those guys. We'll take Julio Rodriguez off your hands. Thank you. Here's Josh Hood for the Mariners. Mark Bissett. Just call it. Season's over. Yeah, trade Kalanick too. Why even have those guys if the rest of the guys aren't going to hit? It's a lost season already. Let's just call it. Hit the reset button. Here's Alex Ramirez to 199. Yeah, they're they're not going to Yeah, they're not going to pay him anyway. Chad, your team's not going to pay him. Your team sucks. You're not going to pay Julio Rodriguez anyway. So he's going to be gone after all of his ARB years. Right? Yeah, free age starting to go there. They're just going to have bad years when they go to Seattle anyway. I do, but you don't. You think they're going to give him a second contract? No. I'm surprised that they got him to pay. Got him a contract now. At the cheapest, cheapest you could get for Julio Rodriguez. You didn't want to hit him. Hit open market. Seattle would never have a chance. There's William Lugo. It's a 15-year deal. Well, there's got to be outs, right? Uh, yeah, he's probably not even so fine. I don't know why Chad's suddenly defending his team. Chad, you know that you know that he's not going to last the entire contract. So may as well just, uh, yeah, they'll trade him. You got to save money anyway. In fact, they should just move the team, Chad. With fans like with fans like Chad Daw. Just move the team. Get a, yeah, just, just have them leave Seattle. It's an ice hockey town. Seattle is not a baseball town. It's an ice hockey town. 
Where should where should Seattle go? They should say uh, Salt Lake City wants a team. Oh, uh, that that Chad wouldn't mind. That team sucks. Send send the Mariners to Oklahoma City. Justin Crawford to 175 pink paper I don't know sounds like sounds like the Mariners sounds like Seattle needs some more she needs more fans like Rex out there Can we trade Rex from the Cubs to the Mariners? Cubs fans might need a little, uh, a little more downers like uh, like Chad though. Here's Jose Peroza, 008 out of 250, purple Ray Wave for the Mets. It'll be for uh, for Neil. There's Emmanuel Bonilla, 005 out of 100 Atomic for the Blue Jays. That'll be for Neil as well. Hooli to the Yankees. Judge, isn't that? Judge will be fine. We'll just move him to DH once, uh, once Stanton runs out of his contract. Good teams with good players can always make it work. Rex. Rex saying it's it's not always about the chips. That's precisely what it's about. It's always about the chips. That's the only reason why any team plays the game. That's the only reason why we even keep track of, if it's not about the chips, why even keep track of win-loss records? We should just play for participation trophies at this point. This isn't Little League Baseball. It is about the chips. Why are you hating on me being angry with your team? Sounds like you're giving up on your team. You didn't play any sports growing up? I mean, I wasn't coordinated either, but I still played sports. I think it's it's important, I think, to, to play sports, I think. That's a good. So it's team sports. I think is is important. You learn about winning. You learn about losing. You learn about yourself. Get that winning mentality. It's always about the chips. Otherwise, we wouldn't keep score. Samuel Munoz to 125, at least in the majors. When you're a kid, whatever. On the on the pro level, I mean, it is all about the chips. That's why we're paying these guys all that all this money. 
No, what, yeah, what, what did you hunt? I'd like to go bow hunting someday. There's Matt Mervis, Bowman first autograph for Scott Goodman in the Cubs. If it wasn't always about the chips, many owners wouldn't consider... Well, that's because they're greedy owners. That's different. For the fans and for the players and for the front office, it's always about the chips. You're always battling owners for that. You think owners are always doing the, what's in the best interest of their employees? No way. Look at your CEO, Rex. Guys cashing in all these bonuses while, while guys like you who's working their butts off through a pandemic. What are you getting paid, Rex? You should be getting, you should be getting a piece of that CEO money. Just like that, another goal for Vegas. Uh, I hope we can, Nicole. It's good start for my Lakers game one. A Kings Lakers series would have been a lot of fun. That would have been a lot like some of the old days. There's Jonathan Mejia, 53 out of 99, Invicta autograph. Would have liked to see a little Kings Lakers. But yeah, hopefully Lakers can do well against the uh, Warriors. Good start, though. So far, so good. Simon for the Cardinals gets the Jonathan Mejia Invicta autograph. Gabe, what's going on? Welcome. There's Jace Avina, 38 out of 150. I don't know why I top loaded that, but there you go. I was going to get top loaded anyway. Brewers Mark with that one. Here's a Drew Jones for Matthew. Have you seen how terrible Drew Jones's helmet looks? Is there something wrong with his helmet? Here's a Henry Davis, seven out of 50. Nice Bowman Scouts top 100 gold for the Buccos, Brandon with the Pirates. There's Hector Rodriguez, purple paper to 250 for Mark and the Reds.
And we've got Tommy Specht, 143 out of 200, uh, 250 purple chrome autograph for the Rangers. Chad Cromwell, last bot mojo. I think we had another one previously as well. Yeah, we had one previously as well. Last spot mojo, 70% of the time, hits 100% of the time. Especially in the main breaks. Terrible how though, I'm not, I'm not sure how it looks terrible. My, my eye is not as sharp as yours, Gilo. All right, halfway through this break, about another 35, 36 minutes to go. It looks photoshopped. I don't know, maybe that, well, the, the one on the, the, the preview image on the website is definitely photoshopped. That's a mock-up. Does it look the same way here too? I guess the entire photo kind of looks like it, right? It almost looks like they put the Bowman Inception filter on it or something like that. Maybe that's the way the, the matte, maybe it's a matte helmet, kind of looks, looks a little weird on, on a photo. Maybe they oversaturated it a little too much. I mean, I'm sure all these photos are, are photoshopped to a certain extent. Maybe they were a little aggressive on the uh, some of the color corrections. All right, I think some of you may have noticed another one of those autographs, an uh, Under Armour autograph or All-American autograph, which may mean we will get a bonus auto out of this box. More often than not, that's what it seemed to, seemed to have looked like. There's Brett Beatty, 61 out of 199. Purple paper for the Mets, that's gonna go to Neil. And then we have a Hayden Younger autograph. Refractor autograph, 485 out of 499. For Toronto, that's also for Neil. He's heating up. He's on fire. From downtown. And it's Nate Savino. Uh, Diamondbacks. We the other one was a Nate Savino as well. The auto seemed cleaner on the first one. Is he a lefty? He's a lefty. He must write left. Sometimes left-handers run their hand across the. This announcer's voice is just wrecked after after a game.
There's Andres Mesa, 141 out of 199 for Chad and the Rangers. Gilo's left-handed, Smear City. You're a lefty, huh? Do you hit left as well? There's a Henry Davis autograph. Nice. 45 out of 50. Another Bowman Scouts top 100 gold, but this time with the auto. Nice. Former number one overall pick. Another big name for the Pirates that could come up pretty soon. Wow. You only right left, but you do everything else right handed? You bat, you throw, you putt right handed? Hmm. Isn't that the? Uh, I feel like I feel like that's one of the. Uh, if you look at all the behavioral sciences for the FBI, I think they say that that's uh, that's part of what serial killers do. Gila, are you a serial killer? We can uncover some crimes right now. Here's a true crime episode here in Bowman Picker Team Nine. Jaspi true crime episode. Do you, do you, do you, uh, did you wet the bed through adulthood? Do you still wet the bed? Do you have the propensity to start fires? Do you harm animals? Do you right left but do everything right handed? Do you often give yourself uh, high compliments? Like saying that you're the, do you often say to yourself, I'm the Otani of this? Do you think you're smarter than everybody else? Here's a nice Jacob Berry autograph. It's gonna go to Nicole and the Marlins. That's for the spot that she won in the filler. Sixth overall pick. Well, you might be a serial killer, Gilo. Someone look up uh, look up unsolved murders in the Kansas City area. Someone pull that. I'm sure those are really easy to find. Just pull up those numbers, and we'll figure it out. Welcome to another... True crime break with Joe Jaspi. Every uh, every eight box pick your team jumbo case break that we do, we solve a new cold case. Where we uncover serial killers. And here's Jorge Burgos to four ninety nine. Oh, you love cereal. Love it enough. Love it enough to murder, Chilo. This could be like, uh, be like case breaks and Dateline together. All Kansai, Rex. All Kansai. No, Chilo is a long-suffering Royals fan. But his sports fan temperament is much, much more easygoing because he's also a fan of the Chiefs. So his 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 murderous rage is not as not as great as say 
our friend Chad Daw from the Pacific Northwest. Challenge just got thrown out. Like what, at, at home plate? I do not remember Trump graduating. I feel like a lot of people could have made that mistake. The ump threw him out. Right, that's what umps usually do. Was it at first base, second base, home plate? They're the ones calling the outs. Here's a Hunter Barco. Yeah, that's what umps do. Chad, you're out of here. Point to a base, you're out. Oh, he got ejected. Well, that's different. For what? And Hunter Barco goes to the Pirates. So this might mean we, we might get a fourth autograph out of here. This goes to Brandon and the Pirates. Won the spot in the filler. Maybe uh, he struck out and walked away, then he got thrown out. Oh, well, you know what happened, Chad. We all saw the movie Bull Durham. There's Jace Bowen, 116 out of 125, also for the Pirates. Jackson Curiel, number one on the Bowman Scouts Top 100. Here is Jace Avina, 291 out of 499. That's uh, Jackson Curio's future teammate. It's for Mark from the Brewers. Oh, yeah, that's right, Gilo. You've got Max Muncy, Dodgers edition, on your fantasy team. He sure did. A walk-off grand slam. If you go to the live stream video earlier tonight, you might hear me say, Max Muncy is going to hit a grand slam. And then a few moments later, he hits a grand slam to walk it off against Craig Kimbrell and the Phillies. Boy, am I glad the Dodgers do not have Craig Kimbrell anymore. Not this Max Muncy. Well, you know the magic words get thrown out, Chad. Uh, you probably called the ump a... Uh, A, I don't even know if there's a delicate way to say this on a family-friendly show here. There are some implications made about his bedroom habits, I want to say. John with the twins. That'll get you run. Hector Rodriguez, yellow paper, 75. Now, I think from, from, what I, from what I know about, from what little I know about getting ejected in professional baseball, is that, yeah, you might be able to comment on, on the call. Like, you, you could be like, hey, hey, um, that was a BS call. That was low. Now, if you walk away and you're like, you're BS, um, it's a slight difference, but that can get you run. 
I mean, he could have been like, what a D, as he's walking away, loud enough, under his breath maybe, thought he was under his breath. He could have been like, you're, you're an S ump. Or he can be like, what a, what a S ump, as he's walking away. So that's it, Chad? You're done with Kalanick now? Yeah, Kalanick's done. Trade him. <laughs> Got it, Jack, that it's over. There's Nick Vogt to 150, blue chrome. Rex is saying, Kimber at one point was on a Hall of Fame track, same way David Price. Well, that's the thing, Rex. It's hard to keep up, keep that up. Yeah, Kimber was awesome at one point with the Braves and even with the Cubs for a bit. But that's what happens. And players regress. They start to suck. <laughs> You know, they can't, they can't have that dominance forever. That's what makes that. Well, that's the difference between Hall of Fame players and not Hall of Fame players. You know, anyone can have a string of good years, but, you know, more, more often than not, most players are not going to do that from beginning to end of his career. Same with David Price, same with Craig Kimbrell. I don't think that's strange at all. I think that's pretty common, actually. Right, I mean, look at what Kershaw is. He, Kershaw, I think, won NL Player of the Month. You know, and he doesn't have his best stuff anymore. But he's still figuring out ways to win. He's 50 out of 150, Eric Kornatz. That's, that's why you give players like that. Gotta give them a lot of credit. That's why they're special. David with the White Sox. I mean, in my opinion, that, that, sh that shouldn't be strange. That shouldn't be strange to anybody because that's what happens all the time. He struck out swinging. It was super weird on why. Maybe what was the pitch before, Chad? Maybe the pitch before was outside but was called a strike, expanding Kalanick's strike zone, meaning he had to swing at whatever pitch was next which made him mad because he had to expand the strike zone because he didn't know where that pitch was going to be called. And then you go, um, um, your Blair is blind as a bat. You're an S ump, mf -er. You mf -er. You mf that ump, you're getting run. Damon Keith. That goes to the Dodgers. That'll be for Mark Bissett. That's what happens there, Chad. Does his ump suck? We could look at ump score tomorrow. Let's see how much he really sucked. There's a Twitter account that does ump scores. It's really great. I don't know. Or maybe... Jared Kellenick heard Chad Daw on the Jaspi stream being like the Mariners suck. And he's just like, well, with fans like this, why should I even play the game? Why am I, who am I playing for here? Just a paycheck? Here I am trying to play for the fans. Here I am trying to pay for the, play for the fans and just not being appreciated by Chad Daw. I'm out of this game. At least I am a fan. You're pretty sure there's only 250 people at the park today? Really? Why? What's the weather like? Out, what's the weather like right now? Oh, it was raining. That's why, Chad. There was a rain delay. I think it was delayed for hours. There would have been 500 people there, but they lost half the crowd in Oakland. Is it, There's a question, Rex. Where on the list would you put Kershaw for best Dodgers pitcher? Probably number two. Behind Sandy Koufax. Ooh, 
another uh, All-America Baseball autograph, which might mean there's an extra hit, extra auto. Scott's saying, I don't know if there's much I can do in the A's favor without completely throwing the game right. There would be some splaining to do. What, James? Did you know, James is telling me, did you know that Kershaw and Matt Stafford grew up together and are best friends? You're going you're gonna to tell me they played high school football together in Texas. I did not know that. Next thing you know, you're going you're gonna to try to tell me that Antonio Gates used to play basketball in college. Which would be crazy. That doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't think very many people know. Wow. Wow. That's 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 a bit of trivia, James. I had no idea about. No one's ever mentioned that. Cubs have never been known for pitching, so Greg Maddox has to be their number one, right? I think uh, I think Fergie Jenkins would like a word, Rex. Come on, such disrespect to Fergie Jenkins. I think Fergie Jenkins has a statue outside of Wrigley. Not Greg Maddox. There's Kenny Gomez, 43 out of 99. Right, or Three Finger Brown. Show some respect to Three Finger Brown. Kevin Gomez, green grass for the Astros, Orin. Show some respect to, to Luke Aparicio. Or was he a was he even a pitcher? He's a White Sox, I think, actually. There is Kyler Fedko, one hundred fifty one out of four ninety nine. I don't know, Maddox has got to be ahead of Pryor and Kerry Wood though, right, James? No? I don't know. Who are the best pitchers in Cubs franchise history? Not pitchers who happened to be Cubs at one point that had great careers, but just while there were... I don't know. Let's, we should look at Cubs records here. Robert Moore. Roger Moore? Fire when ready, Mishmoney Penny. That's more Connery as Bond. Roger Moore. No, Robert Moore. Robert Moore. More, more, more. How do you like it? That's a Brewer. That's going to go to Mark Bissett and the Brew Crew. By war, if you like advanced heads. It looks like Fergie Jenkins. See? Fergie Jenkins got, got it. Put some respect on Fergie Jenkins' name. We're talking baseball. Hmm. 
Who's two on that list then? Now, if you have that list up, I think Rex might have that list up too. Forget 84.2 war, 284 wins, 226 losses, 334 ERA. Well, Fergie, I think he's got a statue. I think he's got a statue in front of Wrigley. Somewhere around there, somewhere around Wrigley, Wrigleyville. We're talking baseball. We got Amarion Boyd, 49 out of 150. A little color match there, a bit. The blue helmets. Phillies, that's going to be for Neil. Maddox has a 106 war. Well, how, many, how many of those wins above replacement points were with the Cubs? I feel like most of Fergie Jenkins is with the Cubs. Maddox has some good Atlanta years, too. <laughs> Keep talking about, yeah. Yeah. Joe Jaspi talking it up is going to, is going to up that, uh, is going to up that Fergie Jenkins value. I don't think I'm moving markets, though. Ah, only 31.6 of Maddox's were for the Cubs, see? We're working on improving Rex's research skills. I'm glad that he name-checked baseball reference, though. Austin Charles to 199. That's for the Royals, Jason Parker. Right, he did play for the Fergie, did play for the Cubs longer. And I think the question was, who's the best Cubs pitcher, right? Jorge Ruiz to 499. Maddox doesn't even deserve to be in the same sentence as Fergie Jenkins. Empty net goal for Vegas. Although I'm pretty sure that if someone correct me if I'm wrong, Greg Maddox won a Cy Young Award with the Cubs, and then the Cubs ownership, who still might be the same owners as today, got cheap and did not re-sign Greg Maddox, and, they, and then Atlanta re-signed him. There's Brandon Walter. It's Rick T with the Red Sox. That's our fourth hit. The All-America autograph generally indicates an extra auto, which I won't complain about. All right, we made it. Final box. Box number eight for Pick Your Team 9. Pick Your Team 10 in the store right now. Old Three Finger did win two World Series with the Cubs, and his third in their pitcher wins above replacement. Old Three Finger, Old Three Finger. Is Three Finger is is Old Three Finger Mordecai Brown? Or is that someone else? Or is Mordecai is it Mordecai Brown? Who's old skin and bones then? There is an old ball player nicknamed Old Skin and Bones. That was somebody else, I guess. It was a huge mistake by the Cubs owner. However, just like we said before, the players like Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes? Maddox may not have gone on to be a Hall of Fame player with them. Mm, I disagree. Mahomes may not be the player he was on a different team simply because with the NFL, 
you require so many pieces to work in concert with the, uh, the quarterback. With Maddox, I think he could have been on any mound. He could be on a terrible. He might not have as many wins. But I think he would have put up the same numbers. Yeah, that's different. You're comparing apples to oranges, Mr. X. I think Greg Maddox would have had a Hall of Fame career wherever he was. The wins might have been down, but with him pitching and painting corners like he does, I think he still he would have gotten the W's. He would have gotten he would have still had 20 win seasons even on the worst teams. Teams would have gone they could have teams would have won like 60 games and 20 of those would be for for Greg Maddox. That's how good he was. But that's more of an individual task, you know what I mean? Like pitching is less reliant upon your, your fellow players. Very different from the NFL, which requires so much to work together. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm sure his resume in terms of, in terms of like him being on a good team certainly helps. There's a 399 John Carlos Stanton Greed paper, but I would argue that he's one of those unique pitchers. That might be true for some other pitchers. Where you're like, eh. You know, I think... Uh, I think you might argue that them being on a good team has helped. But... I think for, for baseball pitchers, especially for the caliber of Greg Maddox, I don't think it would have really mattered what team it was on. No, no, no. Uh, Scott, uh, Rex is, is positing, he's questioning whether Greg Maddox would have the same career he did if he had stayed with the Cubs. There's Nick Vogt with the Padres. And I'm saying, yeah, a player like him, I think he would have had a pretty similar career arc and would have been a Hall of Famer. And Jeremy Port and the Padres. Right. Yeah, probably fewer wins, stats would be similar, right? and Hall of Famer, right? I mean, like the 90s Braves are like the, are like today's Dodgers, right? They only knocked out one World Series, so it's not like the World Series win is helping Maddox's resume. There's Max Muncy to 499. Yeah, baseball is weird, Rex. I think NFL and the NBA, I think it's like, hey, how many chips did Jordan win? How many chips does LeBron have? How many chips does Brady have? You know, how many chips does Mahomes have? I think the chip conversation, the championship conversation, I think is weighed more. There's more weight on them for, for players in those sports. Baseball is a little different. You know, there could be players that, like, yeah, like Tony Gwynn, Kirby Puckett. Well, Kirby Puckett won a World Series, right, early 90s. Cal Ripken maybe did too. Tony Gwynn didn't. But Tony Gwynn, RIP, you know, is an example, one of probably many examples of players who were on bad teams, but you can still put up individual numbers. Having that sort of postseason hardware isn't as crucial for... Uh, for a ball player, major league baseball players, just because it's so GD hard. To 249 out of 499, Yoanhel Aponte for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Ricken did his rookie year, right? Do I consider the Bucks a failure this season, or did Giannis' speech change your mind? Hmm. Like I was saying before, right? I think. You know, and I was—I guess I was a little tongue in cheek, but I think, yeah, I think I do feel that. Why do you play the game? You play the game. You count. You keep score and you keep records because you want to win. You want to win championships. Uh, so. 
so I think that particular season is a failure. I think the players as individual are not failures. They played very hard. They did very well. They, you know, they just happened to run into a hot heat team. Giannis was injured for a couple of games, and that's that. So you, you can't call the individuals failures, but overall, you know, if the goal is to win a championship every year, and it should be, yeah, the, the, this particular season, yes, was a failure. There's Elijah Green to 150 Atomic. I liked what Giannis had to say. I get what he was trying to say. You know, like you do have to appreciate the accomplishments of the regular season and how hard they work to even get to that place. There's Jason Dominguez to 299, pink paper. You know, but the goal is to win trophies and they did not. You know, 29 teams in the NBA will fail every season. Look how far, yeah, I mean, I, I agree, Rex, but I don't know. That's just not the mentality that I have. You know, maybe... Maybe as a privileged Lakers fan, you know, you know, maybe I, maybe I've just been, you know, naively conditioned to think that it's just championship or bust. But that's just how, that's the city that I grew up in. That's just the, what the expectations are, you know, like. Thirty-six out of two fifty. Colby Thomas, purple chrome, and I know that. LA definitely has their own advantages, you know, to be able to win those championships, but that's just how I grew up, you know? And so, yeah, you can appreciate a regular season, but ultimately a season that does not end with a title is a failure. I'm not saying it's easy. 30, 30, 29 teams in the NBA and the MLB are going to fail every year. Which doesn't mean your, you know, your life is over. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. But yeah, I mean, the job not job was not accomplished. You know, yeah, you can appreciate the regular season, but at the end of the day, they didn't win. But it's hard to win. I think I think we have to acknowledge that. You can't be too hard on a team, but it is a failure. Here's the recap. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Really nice break, boys and girls. That was Pick Your Team number nine. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.